<laughs> cool. Well, welcome everybody to the next iteration of the UX SIG meeting, small group today. Um, we have our typical items, obviously nobody new today, uh, so we can skip past that and dig right into some updates here. Uh, so the first one, oh, there we go. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, so the first one on the list here is uh, called Welcome Screen UI. Um, it's under this title of Empty States, and we'll see why in just a second here. So I'm going to share a brief design deck, and then we'll talk about implementation. Shall I take the minutes, Joe? Just uh, oh. the housekeeping notes? Yes, that would you be got. great. Sorry about that. I forgot. Yeah, no, I'll uh, take care of that then. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, so uh, the item we're looking at here is the welcome screen UI in Jenkins. Uh, we had talked about this previously, I think, real briefly, uh, how we wanted to improve this. And so here is what the design currently looks like. Uh, there are a couple of different configurations uh, possible in Jenkins, depending on the user's permissions. Um, but here's the current state, uh, you know, grayed out all of the other elements here so we can focus on what matters. And here's the updated design. Um, important to note here that uh, this is very much still a static mock at this point. Uh, this is not being implemented yet, and Felix can uh, speak more to that shortly, but this is uh, very open to feedback at this point still too. So looking at this, uh, some key takeaways here are that this, the goal of this is to improve the usability by doing a couple things, uh, making the style here um, more consistent with the other components that we've redesigned, and also by providing additional context for the situation. And everyone on this call is familiar with this state. It's not uh, an entirely um, common state, certainly. It's not uh, even really arguably that confusing, but we have an opportunity here to introduce a formal empty state treatment. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and we'll look at some more variations of that, but any questions or, or thoughts on that before we dig further? We have like an image or just something to... Uh, sure, is this, sorry, is this not showing up? No, 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 I mean, what I'm seeing here is all text. I'm just wondering if, you know, we have a lot of empty real estate, can we just show a pretty picture or something? Gotcha. Uh, it's um, not, so it's a pretty common common thing to do that with empty states, right? And it offers yeah. an opportunity to inject some, some personality in there. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't think, it, you know, I don't see why not. I, I personally lean toward keeping things more minimal and not overwhelming, especially since the configuration here could be a little bit, you, you know, we, depending on the permissions, we might be offering three different options here with, with external yeah. links already. Um, I could explore that if that's something we, we think would be useful or, or beneficial. Maybe we could get the Chuck Norris plugin pre-installed and then have it show its first image. That one I'm not too sure about, um, but, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but something agreed could, there's an opportunity there. Um, whether it can be done gracefully in a way that doesn't uh, push the, the more important details here out of the way, uh, I can explore. Uh, so let me, mm. let me check into that and provide a mock-up for you in the next SIG, or actually we'll, we'll talk about it sooner than that, Jeremy. And yeah, maybe like kind of a, like a line arty kind of Jenkins figure, you know, like a light gray, just, you know, I don't know, just thinking something out Something subtle. Something subtle, yeah. Yeah, there's there's an opportunity here. Um, yeah, I think I think there's probably not much more for me to say on it right there or for now, except to say that that's worth exploring. So let me check into that. Yeah, I quite like it. Like it's a lot nicer that I think than the existing one. Um, I was wondering the one bit that I'm not so sure about is how it's got like create an agent, configure a cloud, and create a job. It's kind of like the first, the first one is two different options. And the other bit I'm wondering about is whether setting up an agent or a cloud should be as part of creating the first job. Um, yeah, it's, it's a valid question for sure. Um, my goal here was really just to 
to, to update the style of what we currently have. And so to provide those same options, um, this could be an opportunity to, to reconsider those a bit, but I think that is a, a slightly larger discussion, but, but uh, what would you suggest there? Um, so one thing, just on the, so the first one, it's quite clear um, that you create an agent or configure a cloud. So this one here doesn't really convey that it's one of the first two options. I could see that, yeah. Um, I wouldn't get too hung up in this yeah. in, in copy in copy text because this is just to design mock up. It will need to go through copy editing process anyway. So, yeah, this is a good point. Thanks, Felix. Um, it will it will need to be verified. The copy that we see here will need to be reviewed by by the documentation writers to make sure that it's clear and consistent. Um, I do see your point there, Tim. I'm not sure that we want to solve it right now. Um, the the goal really the scope here is just to is just to change the style. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a big improvement. Uh, that that welcome to Jenkins has always bothered me, but that doesn't doesn't feel right. Yeah, I actually, I, ironically, I actually like the, the, the bit of personality with Welcome yeah. to Jenkins personally, but, um, but I think it's more important to provide some context here and say what would actually be here and why are you seeing this message? Mm, yeah, great. Yeah, hey, Rosha. All right, cool. So, uh, just to reiterate for my own notification. So Jeremy, I'm going to take a look at, at what we could possibly do. There was something more visual. Uh, and Tim, that's a good point. Uh, let's keep in mind that we're going to have to uh, review with documentation here about the copy, but I think we're not going to probably solve uh, how these relate to one another right now. This is just more purely stylistic for the moment. Yeah, I mean, even whether you, I mean, not to go into too much detail, but whether you can separate the top and bottom section a little bit, have the agents and jobs as separate things. Yeah, maybe. Okay, I will. I will take this into consideration. And uh, this is something you know. I mentioned here that this kind of introduces a formal empty state that could be useful throughout the rest of Jenkins. So this is, in a way, just the start of a new type of treatment, right? That could be implemented in many other places. And we'll actually talk about that pretty in depth in the next SIG meeting. Um, but that's good feedback for, for taking into that consideration of how we could have options relate to one another um, more, uh, more intelligently than just a stack of items perhaps in the future. Uh, so just like uh, with the current UI, uh, depending on the user's permissions, uh, these options might need to change. So just a different iteration of this is uh, just the option to create a job or an agent, or even depending on the sign-in state, the options to log in or sign up. Again, not trying to introduce anything different in functionality here, just in, just in style from what currently exists. Um, and I think I may have, I may be repeating myself, but um, really important takeaway here is that uh, just like with the rest of this initiative up until now, we are trying to improve the user experience through improved style, improved design. So it's really key that uh, the interactive states are as consistent as possible with the other components that we've implemented as well. There's some slight deviation in the treatments here, but um, this component also exists in a different context within the UI and it gets a different background than say a particular nav item in the sidebar. Uh, so it does require some different treatment, but using the same color palette, the same text styles, that sort of thing. Was somebody gonna say something a minute ago? Sorry about that. Mm, it might've been me, but it's okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, and the last item here was just seeing it in context. Uh, you can see that it relates back to the other improvements uh, pretty nicely. And so we're overall, just like with other components, making a more consistent UI piece by piece. Nice. Any, anybody else for now? Uh, if we can move ahead to the implementation details discussion. For sure. Um, yeah, so, 
I was doing some tech analysis of this improvement. And I did found, find out that this is something that if we, if we approve and go ahead with this design, it will be tough to support the existing transnations for the empty states. First of all, the copies change. We cannot do anything about it. But also the way they are, the current uh, translations are set, are set, they are, the, each line is in line and the, the hyperlinks are in line within the translation. So what that means is that it's going to be tough to actually be able to implement it without breaking translations, without breaking uh, internationalization for existing localities. I don't know if that's acceptable or if, or if it's not what an alternative could be. So I appreciate any ideas on this one, especially Uli and Tim. Do you mean right, for the power? welcome screen? What? Do you think it's only for the welcome screen broken or for everybody who is using that concept? I know it's for the welcome screen. I would guess it's for everything. Okay. They use the set that, that state. Uh, so if I mean, you don't the translations just default back to English if the text is missing? Yes, but I mean, so it, may, it may be weird for everybody to just see James if revert to a huge English block. I don't I know mean, if people I would be bothered I mean, by it. I wouldn't. I mean, I mean, I think that's kind of, you know, just the reality of making changes to new elements that, you know, new translations will be required and we have a fallback to English and the localization teams, if they're sufficiently motivated, it will hopefully this, this is one of the This is one of the least seen screens by users. It's, it's only seen by the admin when they first install it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to mention it then. So, so if everybody agrees, I can go ahead with a POC. Yeah, yeah I don't really understand the problem. No, I mean, I just, don't, I, I just don't want to break uh, all, uh, like I'm, I'm looking at them right now, almost uh, 20 to 30 translation localities. So if it's okay with everybody, uh, yeah, uh, it's okay by me. I, I will go ahead with it then. And also something that Uli, you may have noticed, I think, I mean you, because you may be, it'd be the most interesting that I think this is an opportunity to sort of introduce some sort of card component here. Mm -hmm. uh, we will try to make reusable components, not ad hoc uh, stuff. We will try to do reusable stuff that everybody can use later to find, so that Jenkins can finally have, have some sort of card. Okay. And um, I dreamed a bit <laughs> so, uh, the other day and Maybe I have the idea that for people with a more skill of extensions point than I, this could be a, this this sort of screen could be a good place for for example, imagine that the, maybe the list of call to actions could be an extension point, so that plugins could register and add their own call to action. For example, the pipeline create your pi create a new pipeline or a cloud agent, green register your, uh, your agent, or I don't know if Jacas could have something. So that's just an idea I wanted to float. I don't know if necessarily that's a good one, uh, but maybe if this sort of list format could enable uh, us to do, to do it. Yeah, one thing I'm not understanding is the, the bottom line, is this the title or what is the the idea of the learn more about distributed builds. So typically yeah. you have a, a title for a card and not a bottom line. So. It's a, I, I understand it as a card footer. Uh, okay. or, or a content block footer and it's more of a there more button. Okay. Exactly, so. yeah. Um, it would be the the equivalent of, of this uh, item here. So if there's a, a relevant documentation or external link, it exists in, in a different place in the, the anatomy, but it's, it's a, a card footer essentially. Yeah, I'm not sure if, it, if this 
kind of component will be used by so many uh, plugins because um, this is as a, the idea of Jenkins is to use everything by code and not by clicking around in the yeah, near future, hopefully. So this is something which is more a kind of wizard thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we have so much uh, requirements for providing such uh, wizards. Okay. I, I think it's the, a lot of people are using Jenkins configuration as code to set up the whole instance. They don't want to use any UI to configure the Jenkins instance. I think this is more for the first time user though. I mean, this is not, this is probably not so much if you're setting up your 28th master, but mm. I mean, I think the problem is, you know, if you, you heard about Jenkins, you download it, you install it and you have the kind of the now what problem, you know? Yeah. And this I think is the good start, you know, yeah. towards that. And I agree with you that, I mean, if you're experienced, you, you won't be using this. You'll hopefully be using some kind of automation or you'll know what you're doing, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to that, I, I, I was also wondering then, um, just for this particular screen, um, instead of the title, No Jobs Created, um, I think that's already very specific. Um, I mean, like, okay, we know that this should be where the jobs are listed and it's nothing there. So uh, we want to create a job, but maybe just, you know, let's create a job or let's start building or something like that to be more um, toward what users can do or want to start doing instead of trying to figure out, you know, jobs, what are jobs? Um, yeah, you know, these kind of questions, if you're really a first time user, like Jeremy just said, this screen will be mostly used for. Yeah, I think that's that's really good feedback. Thank you. Um, it it depends a lot on how we're how we're thinking of this, and this is the first time that we're introducing like this this type of card, right? But if it's uh, if it's specifically an empty state treatment, there are different ways of coming at that. But either way, it, this one does establish how we how we label these these types of states. Um, and I think it could be some, a title that's more geared toward something a little more actionable, maybe a little more positive, as long as it's specific um, in say, in, in explaining what, why this state exists. Um, so I agree. And keep in mind too, this is placeholder text, but, um, but let me update the, the mock with something a little bit more um, appropriate and we'll see what the docs uh, people have to say on that too. I think that in, somebody stopped me if, if we're not ready to move on and that's totally fine, but I think we may be. Um, for the next item, normalization of different colors. Yep, okay, I just wanted to talk about, I've been working the past few days, I was looking at the use of different colors, different grays, especially, especially the gray scale, scale uh, on Jenkins, I found, uh, but also about all of the hard-coded colors, not currently stored in variables on Jenkins uh, codebase. And it's a bit of some sort of an overwhelming task, uh, basically. Uh, uh, my initial goal was to try to, okay, I'm going to get all the grays fitting into these uh, five colors uh, that we have available in our palette. That's yet not possible because many cases the design, the existing design of certain components depend on that. For example, the job configuration or the new item list, uh, option list, the new colors the, don't look right, that, for example. Um, so that sort of needs some, a bit of a redesign, and that's okay. So uh, that said, I'm going to probably be landing a PR with some sort of uh, normalization of colors. Uh, or uh, that I think it's, it can be a good chance to see how it will affect, uh, and, uh, sorry, how it could inspire other plugins uh, to, to do it. Um, yeah, it was just an update or what's, what's going on uh, on our front. Yeah, 
and what you can expect. And it will mostly be focused on the gray, gray scale, gray scale, and not on the all the inline success, uh, greens and reds. Can you give a few examples of this? Yeah, let me look at it. Let, let me look and see if I can have something interesting. A basic example of it is if you search the CSS and the Jenkins code, there's like so many different grays and so, some of them are using the variables and some of them are just using very slight different. Um, yeah. But I mean, is this kind of, I mean, I, I guess what I'm fishing at is, is, is this a, is this a problem from a code neatness point of view or is this a user experience problem for the end user that there's so many grays? I mean, I understand that it's obviously not nice to have CSS with part variables, part non and. No, it's, it's more, of, more of the, more of the former, uh, but in the end it, it leads to inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 sorry, Phil, it, it is indirectly a, a UX problem too, right? Because it's really important that, so each, each one of those subtle different grays that we have in the palette we've established here with the SIG means something and carries, carries connotation. So having that inconsistency does harm the experience, generally mm -hmm. speaking, over time. Right. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so one example uh, to continue, something I touched was a, uh, Light backgrounds, uh, for example, like we have like stripped rows, uh, like the side panel hover effects. Uh, that's a light gray color, which is F8, F8, F8. Um, there were really, uh, there were a, a lot of similar, uh, several similar light gray colors that were not the same uh, used across Jenkins. So what I'm doing is trying to consolidate all of those into using the palette. Well, the palette version of it. Um, also, something that's something I, I, I was actually I was able to do. Something that I skipped and I ignored was, for example, the colors of input elements, form elements, the borders, because I don't know how to do it without making them the um, too similar to the secondary buttons, to the default buttons. And uh, that's something. It's basically something that needs to have proper design attention, so I'm skipping it. It's it's not, uh, it, it's less straightforward than I thought. Okay. Makes sense. Um, I think, unless you have uh, more to share on that for now, Felix, next item, yeah. I believe. Yeah, uh, table changes and different iterations. Okay, so, we merged the tables, tabs and tables PR. There were some feedback. Congratulations uh, on that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we had some feedback. Feedback is spearheaded by Yuli. Uh, I sort of impl I implemented a few, a few of those items. For example, I created a compact variable a variant of the tables for the for the what do I say, the project view, the main view. And I'm wondering if we should, uh, how we should proceed with that feedback or, because to, to be, I, I don't know if we should gather more feedback, more, more opinion on that, because uh, there are many, there are many variants here. So somebody prefers the white header with, with attached uh, tabs, uh, white header with detached tabs, white, uh, gray, light gray header with uh, attached tabs. There are many combinations that I don't think not, not, I don't think everybody, any, everybody's agreeing on one. So, and I'm happy to just go ahead and do any change. So one thing I can do is try to make, to add variants in Jenkins with CSS, like I did with a compact option for the big table. I can add a white header option for the big table or a light or a light gray header option. So that would allow table users to, uh, sorry, plugin authors slash core developer users to add whatever flavor of table they want. Maybe that's not the best for general UI consistency, but they, they could have use 
I can see how that can be useful. So in general, would this help or any idea of how to act on all of these different feedback? Wouldn't it make more sense that we start to provide more than one theme? So we have one theme, now we have a dark theme, thanks to Tim, and then maybe we have a theme that has uh, some kind of light borders theme, and we have a theme that is some kind of yeah, black header for table. I'm not sure. Hey, to be honest, I'm, I'd, I'd, I'd like to try to touch core changes from themes as much as possible. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing everything because the more we support themes, the less we can move on and break stuff, basically. Uh, and right now, everybody knows that dark theme is experimental, but if we just get everything into themes, uh, so themes should be override, but we just still need to provide same defaults. And if everybody prefers, uh, if the consensus is light, a light white header with attached tabs, yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, I, I, I really don't have a strong opinion on that one. But I don't know, creating a theme just for that, I, who should create it, who should host it? So there are many questions there that I don't know. Yeah, there could be one path. Again, it's not something I propose for your to-do list, Felix, but we have Neo2 theme, which is light theme, and it's widely used. So if there was a contributor who would be willing to start migrating Neo2 theme uh, uh, to the new engine provided in recent weeklies, then it could be a convenient way to have another light theme because it's over the existing theme uh, which has some concepts which could be adapted. But uh, yeah, but what I don't understand is mm -hmm. I think it could, can be confusing. I mean, Jenkins default is the light theme. Why is there a need for a Jenkins default is a light version a dark theme fills a void, which is the uh, um, dark ver version of Jenkins. Why, 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 for example, I don't see how it could be useful to spend person power just creating a theme and supporting it because themes need support. Uh, just for a light variation or something that can be done in Jenkins code. I think one of the main bits of those other themes is they, f they fill gaps in the, in the UI or UX experience. It's things mm -hmm. like it's the font, it's the sizing, it's the icons. I mean, the icons are like a major part because the icons in Jenkins are very dated. Um, and some of it was just kind of giving it like a material UI look as well. Mm -hmm. um, but within the context of, of just a, within the scope of the, the header treatment of the tables, right? I don't, I don't know that that, uh, my two cents anyway, that that justifies pulling, pulling that change or that variation into an entire separate theme. Um, that's not to argue against themes in general or anything like that. Just, uh, just that I don't think this particular um, feedback justifies a whole different theme. I think one solution would be to do, to, to do what you were suggesting, Felix, and make it customizable in that way. Uh, for me, I, I'm a little more opinionated about the style than like Felix, I know you're saying you could, you could go with, with either one and we just need to kind of uh, decide, I think. But for me, what it ultimately comes back to is which approach or which style, which one of those recommendations is most accessible visually for the most people. Um, and I think in this case, it was the darker one. I'm happy to revisit that and make sure. Um, but that, that's really what should be our deciding factor because with these style discussions, it can be highly subjective, right? I have my biases. Someone else might have their biases because they use a different tool. So that's all good and well, but it has to be the one that's most legible for the most people ultimately uh, is, is my two cents on it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Basically, what what I what I wanted to go is if people if we, I'm fine with, I encourage having a discussion with uh, to see if uh, to iterate. Uh, the point of iterating of merging fast and iterating is to to, to continue a discussion. Uh, 
I just don't know what the best way to discuss those designs are, or how to I don't know how to gather more all feedback, or how to how to react to that feedback. So I'm I'm a bit at a loss there. I I, I welcome many recommendations on how to act on that feedback because if the feedback they have right now is different separate opinions. I, I I don't know if I'm explaining myself. My English sucks to be to be honest. But yeah, I I, I no. just don't know how to gather it or if there's any experience on this before on some sort of similar things at the English project. I mean, we've we so I have not been in in the the Jenkins picture uh, as long as everyone else on this call. So you know, this is a very limited perspective. But we've had similar situations to this just within the UX the SIG, right? When we look back at the header bar, back then it was certainly an issue of, um, there were some subject, subjective preferences and it was an issue of compromise a little bit from my side certainly and ended up being a much stronger designed element in the end, thanks to all the feedback of everyone here. Um, so this this may just be, you know, it's no one design design choice will make uh, everyone happy about it, especially when it's something stylistic like this. Um, so I think this is one of those where um, we just kind of have to, that, that's why I try to come from the objective perspective of who, which one is the best for the most people, uh, even more so than which one do I like better. Um, I, I guess I'm not entirely sure how to proceed on it either, um, but, but Uli and Tim, I guess I would ask, um, does that sound like a, in a, an acceptable approach, given that we have kind of stylistic differences. What do you think on that idea of let's just go for which one is most visible to more people? Yeah, definitely. Um, just we we don't need two options. We just need one that's good for most people. Yeah, but how do we obtain the uh, feedback? <laughs> just from the mailing list, or because so. Uh, Sorry, which feedback in particular? I'm getting turned around a little bit. Yeah, for instance, to go for white colors or black colors on the borders. So I think in the pull request, it was most of the people, or half people said it must be black and the other half said it must be white. So I think this is something which, which is screaming for, we need a theme for that. <laughs> And we don't need an option that we have one table in this design and another table in another design. That makes no sense for me. I think it, we should toggle all, all tables in Jenkins with one switch. And this is, should be part of a theme, I think. So, and yeah. It, it, can, it can be done, right? Um, a theme can happen. I, I know, like, and this is just me speaking personally, bandwidth-wise, I can't design additional modifications. I don't have, have the capacity to do that to, to support and constantly update a, a different theme. So that's totally possible. But I think, mm -hmm. I think for now, the goal is just to, to decide um, which one will be the choice by default, not whether or not that, that, uh, that one style justifies a different theme, which it, it may. Um, yeah, I think mainly what Joe says is right. I mean, it is a bandwidth issue. I mean, yeah, and obviously two themes means that you got on pretty much twice as much work to maintain yeah. it and test it. And yeah, typically if we would have used Bootstrap for instance as a framework, we we have one hundred of themes available already. So I think yeah, we have really a problem writing it on our own. Um, so yeah. I think yeah, it's okay. We don't need to support more than one theme. That is okay for me. So we should use one major theme for Jenkins. That is okay. But which one then? Yeah, and Bootstrap, which one? Yeah. Bootstrap wouldn't work because uh, the way Bootstrap ma, ma, um, CCC is applied wouldn't work here. Uh, I can provide you with some variants, send you some screen captures. You're getting some Docker containers going on. If you can start a poll or something on the on the mailing list. Yeah, go, uh, I can I can you provide you with all of those options. Uh, personally, for example, I find the white header uh, to be to have poor accessibility. 
the option is I find difficult on, on some monitors to see what's a header and what's not if it doesn't have a contrast in, in the background color, for example. Um, and I think defaults should take into account accessibility. That said, maybe the dark gray is too much. Maybe a light gray option is it could work, pro uh, possibly. Yeah, that's more of a, maybe a, that comes in a stylistic choice. Also, something that can warrant a change on header color is if we prefer to go to further iterate on the tabs and move ahead and create a detached tabs version. And I want to remind everybody that we did not think there was a possibility or we did not, when we work on the designs, we did not consider the possibility of detaching the tabs because I thought it was a community choice and something so strong. And it was to be, uh, if we want to iterate on the tabs as well, yeah, fine. Uh, I will try to provide you Uli with those variants, containers, branches, whatever we can, or maybe just some screen captures and you can, we can get a mailing list thread or something going on. I don't know. I don't want to change it on my own. So please uh, go ahead. If everybody else is fine with it, it's okay. Uh, I don't want to stop your development right now. No, no. I mean, what I mean is, I have locally some style variants prepared, some CSS changes, and some some style variants prepared, and I can go ahead. I can just share it. Uh, what, 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 what I want is to see, uh, if should we change, uh, question A, should we change something? B, if we change which option of tabs, attachment, and color color is it? Uh, right now, we don't have the bandwidth to go through a poll, collect all the, all the feedback over, over everything. But, and, and that is the hard work. The easy, job, the, the easy job is just to make the changes, and I have those almost ready, so. I, I think I also shared some some Docker containers with that. Yeah, maybe it's just sufficient to have some screenshots. So. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will get those for you. And you, Olaf, you ask Bootstrap theme plugin. Thing is, we already go. We already have some styles sort of similar to Bootstrap. Uh, Bootstrap is also changing continuously, and. Bootstrap is more of a lowest common de denominator uh, the, that many tools can use. Having Bootstrap just removes many, uh, some sort of personality for everything uh, because everything, everybody can smell Bootstrap. Yeah. Uh, I didn't propose to implement it for the record. I just referenced it as possible option if somebody wants a challenge. Because, yeah, you can uh, take themes from Bootstrap, you can uh, basically replace uh, existing templates, so similar to how we do in dark themes, and potentially get a theme uh, plugin which allows to use any Bootstrap theme. Uh, yeah, most likely it will uh, look like strange, but uh, technically, if someone is up for a challenge, it's possible. Yeah, but I want to remind you. Uh, yeah, the thing is, Bootstrap. It's not a stylistic a set of style of opinionated yeah. style. It's more of a bootstrap is a framework. It's a tool. Uh, and that tool does not fit well with the way Jenkins is done. So it's really awkward to integrate it into Jenkins code. Really awkward. And it, it will have no backwards compatibility options at all for anything. So um, there is the bootstrap styles uh there's no such thing as bootstrap styles as a design guideline or something they are just styles the default styles of a framework that everybody's supposed to if they want to change so uh that said if anybody wants to create as much themes as they want the customizability is there lots of css variables everybody can go ahead and change everything yeah Okay, um, so do we want to talk more about this topic or can we move on? Because I think yeah, we... uh, one thing from the Jenkins core maintainer perspective. Mm -hmm. So we integrated the current implementation of tables into the weekly release. This weekly release, unless something goes wrong, is likely to become uh, the next LCS baseline. 
So it means that uh, current dark he headers are going there by default. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If uh, there is a decision by the seek to change that due to whatever reason, um, then uh, we need to know about that, uh, let's say by the end of August, because uh, this change can be backported, but in principle, all styling changes which we are integrated uh, in the today's weekly, uh, most likely they're going into LTS. Yeah, I'm, the way you see it is iteration will happen every version. So we can iterate, we can go ahead with, in my opinion, we can go ahead with this. And then maybe we will for the next LTS or for the something, uh, we can, maybe we can try new headers. We can also try new icons. Uh, hopefully we will try the new icons. Maybe a revisited header and breadcrumbs. So iteration can happen across versions. Uh, there are certain stuff that I don't, don't foresee we will change, that I will, I will remain static. For example, um, buttons, hyperlinks, uh, the sidebar. So there are enough elements that are going to be, and that I'm conf I have a high degree of confidence that are not going to be changed. Yeah, uh, yeah. If we, uh, so yeah, my point. I'm thinking think in circles sometimes. I think we can safely go with this, even if nobody is against it, and we can iterate on the November release. No problem. Yeah, yeah that's why I, I highlighted. Think LTS because let's say if there is strong negative feedback coming in the community we still have an option to change it in LTS maybe even keep it as is in weekly and keep experimenting there uh, but yeah, if you want to do that it's uh, really nice to know about it uh, by the end of August if uh, yeah, uh, the, the great thing about this is that these changes can also can be safely applied on incremental on the releases and be backported. If, the, if, if we are only talking about variable changes, mm -hmm. we can change it for a point 0.2 or something. Maybe. Yeah. As long as it's only okay. variables. Cool. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Oleg. I, you know, I think we have different, uh, within this group, we have different views on, on the stylistic preference and that's okay, but since we since we are at a this tiny not a very big one but a tiny impasse there, um, I think we having having it in its current state where it's it's more accessible of, of the solutions to more people is is fine and you know we can change it in the future if if that is correct if it's the right path forward. Yeah. I, I um, I'm, sorry, go ahead, Felix. I was suggest I was going to suggest we go we move on um, because we have fifteen minutes. That's, yeah, uh, just, yeah, we have an important topic, future work. Yeah, uh, future work, I just wanted to share uh, something that, yeah, um, so at the beginning, we, well, with we Cloudbees, we, we, we all together, we created this roadmap. And with roadmap, I mean, or this set of goals we wanted to achieve, uh, headers, uh, iconography, iconography, we went push down the line. Headers, typography, footers, buttons, tables, hyperlinks, side panels. I said uh, we wanted to focus on core elements that would affect the whole UI. Uh, and we believe we are getting there. And we are comfortable ending this first phase of CSS only changes. This, to end the CSS only changes. Uh, or the CSS based changes after we maybe do the empty state buttons. Maybe we can revisit the header breadcrumbs and the table headers because the header and breadcrumbs need revisiting. And then I would consider this phase finished. I, I don't know, I cannot still think of left any more. is empty states, you said. Sorry, I just want to get this iconography and revisiting. Uh, header and breadcrumbs and table headers maybe. Uh, and I think we are at a great place, especially if we look at our before and after of what the Jenkins UI was at uh, January and now. Uh, those bigger overarching changes 
I cannot think of anything else that's better. And then we can we could start looking into deeper surgery, as Jeremy likes to say, mm -hmm. uh, to more important changes. What do we want to work on? Do we want to focus on, on forms? Because we have momentum working on forms. Do we want to um, work on the job history page? Do we want to? So that sort of uh, sharing, that's not, I don't want to start a huge discussion on what to do next. I just wanted to mention that we are nearing the end of what we want to call phase one. And that's okay. Uh, I, I for well, one like to have news. some closure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like to have some closure and to be able to say yeah. we are done, we have achieved. Yeah. Yeah, and just by the way, I'm in the process of writing a blog post for the CDF's blog, which will be talking a lot about the work that's done so far and, you know, trying to get people to join the rest of the effort. So I think it's important that we have a good roadmap of where we want to go to next. Okay. I mean, form seems like a logical one given the table to div kind of moves. Um, shouldn't we include table to divs on the list of what's still left? No, table to dips is a different initiative. I don't, yeah, I, okay. I don't want to, I, I, we have this goal. I, I would like the, the CSS only changes. We have this, right. uh, this goal. I don't want to have a scope creep. I would just want to be able to have, to compartmentalize maybe and say these different mm. sub projects, we are done with them. Uh, I think it's better makes for sense. everybody to avoid having a scope creep there. Makes, okay. makes perfect sense. And I, sorry, I'm just watching the clock here. Uh, Tim, you added a couple items. Yeah. Did you want to share a screen for these? Um, maybe for the dark theme, briefly. Oh. Oh, okay, I'll stop sharing here. Yeah, I'm, I'm done talking. <laughs> the team, if you want to, please go ahead. But how are we going to, I mean, I think it's important that we do try to define what's next, because I mean, I think it's important for well, first of all, our stakeholders at CloudBees that pay your salary, that we have a clear, you know, pipeline. Yeah. This is what we want to do next. So they don't reallocate you to some other project, which is always a danger. And second of all, I mean, I think, you know, we try, want to get people excited about this and to join. And if we have a clear roadmap of, you know, we've done all this work, it's great. We've proven we can do shit. This is what's coming next. Come join us, you know? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I just don't think we have time on this call, but one hundred percent agreed. Well, maybe we should put it as the main agenda item for in two weeks, where we try to think of you know collectively brainstorm. Sure, uh, collectively brainstorm. We can also look at the roadmap, and we can yeah. see if we have UX research capability to see what the actual user 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 actual user interviews to see what the pain points are. There's lots of uh, ways we can decide, but I agree for leaving this topic for the next session. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll just quickly do a brief demo of the new Dark theme release. All right. um, so we released 005 this morning. Um, the main change in it was aligning with the tables change. Um, so now support, so it works with the latest weekly. Um, and without this change, it didn't look very good. So that's done. And also added the text area handler, which is the drag down, and um, adjusted some text, adjusted the dark link colors and the alerts. I'll just quickly show that. Um, so oh, yeah. this, is the, this is the new alert. It used to be quite a light yellow. Um, it still stands out, but kind of experimented a bit, and it was quite difficult to um i think it looks quite good yeah you know, it's uh not everybody's gonna like orange but i mean it contrasts well with the black i think uh so we've got success info uh warning and danger danger all way around Okay, I definitely don't like uh, warnings and error colors, but I guess it's uh, the best thing for warnings because you may want to get rid of them. Um, yeah, so 100% open if anyone wants to do any experimentation. So the theming capability for it's now in Jenkins Core. So 
anyone is welcome to fiddle with the colours there. Um, more, I think they're more readable now than they used to be. Um, but it's something I, an improvement. Yeah, I, I struggled with this. Um, I, I think it might be worth, this is nitpicking, Tim, so feel free to tell me to, to not. Um, <laughs> it might be worth bumping down the, the brightness on the orange and the blue just a bit so that that white text is a little bit more legible, legible and it, it won't look quite as, as appealing. Um, but, but this is definitely an improvement from where it was, so good stuff. Yep, yep, you can certainly give that a try. Um, Cool. So that's that's the alert. How, how there, how there, making a screenshot. Thank you. Got it. <laughs> uh, so alerts. So the next bit was the um, I shouldn't have picked this page. But it's almost there. Yeah, one question about alerts, um, buttons, uh, do they have colors adjusted uh, to alert colors or are they independent? Uh, the buttons haven't been changed at all, they just use the standard. Okay, um, so basically it will be darker blue buttons uh, on any warning screen. Yeah. Which is okay, I guess. It's the same, same as in Jenkins. Yeah. There is nothing, there are no but alert button variants at all. Yeah, uh, that's so why I was asking uh, because after that I may have missed uh, this change. Yeah. Uh, so the next bit is this little handle that you use to drag down text areas is now um, themed and matches the rest of the input colors. Um, the dark link color has changed from a, the blue primary color to the um, to the regular text color. Um, it's mostly was done because um, the blue primary was very light on the timestamp here. It wasn't very legible, um, but now it's quite a lot easier to read. Um, I've rebased all the changes against the um, pipeline stage view pull request. Um, I think I must have made a mistake in the red here, but apart from that, um, it looks it's looking far better. Um, yeah, definitely. It'd be great if we could get. Wow. In as much as the pipeline stage view looks good at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's a different problem. <laughs> looks, better than in, looks better than in stock tanking. True. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's used a lot. Um, yeah, no, it's used a lot. So, I mean, it's something that, you know, even though we're going away from it, it would confuse a little bit of love, I think. Yeah, um, I think. What was that a text thing contrast? Yeah, so that's it. So not very much uh, in there, but um, just mostly paper cuts, just trying to improve it. And the JUnit plugin is still open with the for the JUnit results. Um, so need some review over there as well. Um, and the I think the e charts and the um, Bootstrap API plugin are all merged and released. Um, so e charts work out of the box, and I think so. Warnings NG. Um, looks fine now. Um, so yeah, warnings in G was fixed, but that wasn't, and there was no change to the dark theme plugin for that. Um, and the cloud base support um, plugins also been fixed as well. Um, so there's been a few issues closed recently. Um, the question, if you don't mind, um, what changes were made to the core to, for better support for vulnerability or were there any? Because that, that, that's something I didn't quite follow. Uh, in this release or in general? In general, well, in general for the black theme. Uh, um, in general, it was um, changing from um, CSS, uh, changing from SAS variables to CSS variables so that we could change them at runtime. I've got an upcoming post for the CDF newsletter, which I can share with you um, in case you're wanting to include any of it in, in your yeah. update. Sure, share it, and I will read it at least, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so basically it was changing from SAS variables to less and overwrite and adding variables where there wasn't. So some places weren't using it. That was some of the gray that we were discussing earlier. Sorry, it was less, not CSS variables, but L-E-S-S -S variables. So yeah, moving from less to CSS. Yeah. 
Um, oh, and in some sorry, places, just CSS yeah. needed changing. Um, um, bootstrap needed removing from some places. Um, right. So it's kind of just like cleaning up core a bit to make it easier to make. To yeah, core, core and plugins. Um, yeah. The number of plugins have been changed for it as well. Yeah, for example, in Cloud Be Support uh, plugin, the changes are very low, allowed to get rid of custom JavaScript and other bits, which uh, complicate the maintenance. And it's not the only plugin where we were already able to optimize uh, how UI works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything really quick to share about the tables to divs? Yeah, really quick to share is that the CSS PR has merged for it. So both the CSS and JavaScript changes have been mainlined. Um, mm -hmm. The CSS changes haven't been merged back into it yet, so it's, con it's conflicted. Um, but once that's done, the diff should be just jelly files and very small CSS and JS changes. Mm -hmm. and are you still going to go ahead with um, to try to go ahead with the fallback option? Sorry, to the opting option. Uh, feature toggling up. Yeah, or should we just try to power through it um, for the yeah. oh in August? I'm not sure if I can be bothered doing the feature toggling approach at the moment. I don't have time, but yeah. possibly just taking a look at some of the app issues and trying to fix them. Yeah, I be agree. More better use of the time. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. If we can, uh, I say if we can unlock that bre layout breaking by issue, we can just match it at the beginning of August, in my, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only way that I could see to fix it is to adjust to change the layout and then change the layout everywhere and then patch the JavaScript. Because I was able to get it to not break by removing one layer of nesting, but then a lot of JavaScript needs to change and God knows what the impact is. Well, if it's what it's needed. <laughs> oh, we just change a whole bunch of plugins. It's not, it doesn't break through many of them. Yeah. Okay, so I think we are almost over the time. Uh, I think we can call it uh, a meeting. Uh, thank you. It, is there anything else anybody wants to say? Okay, then thank you everybody for attending and see you all in August, in two weeks. Enjoy yeah. the beach, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.